Have you ever wondered what it would be like to move abroad and open up a business? Well, the next guest on our show today, Cecilia, has done just that. But she's not just opened up one corporation, she's opened up two in under a year. So before we listen to her story and her journey about how she did it, make sure you click on the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And for those of you who are interested in becoming a global citizen, make sure you check out our website, globalcitizenlife.org. And now let's see what Cecilia has to say about her journey and opening up her businesses. So welcome to today's show. And today we have Cecilia joining us. Thank you very much for joining us today and spending some of your time with us to let us know about your experiences and and your adventures with becoming pretty much a a global citizen as as you've relocated. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you as well for inviting me. (laughs) So to start a little bit, let's let's kind of go back in time a little bit and talk about how you ended up moving to where you're at if it was and I don't want to give it away too soon so if it was the first place you came to was there a place on the way what's kind of your story and and your history before getting to to where you're at now so um I used to live in uh, New Zealand and where I met my husband Matt yeah we got married last year in New Zealand and then we decided to go overseas and somehow do our honeymoon and live overseas for a while because New Zealand at the time has one of the harshest lockdowns. It's been like, what do you call this? It's been like two years on and off um, lockdown. It, aff- it affects somehow our livelihood, our mental well-being in, 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 um, in general, especially for young people like us as well. And then we made some research, this and that, because for me, I'm still a Philippine passport holder, where in fact, it's kind of like an obstacle or a hurdle for me to migrate easily in um, different country that we choose. So I only have like different visas, like the States, like this um, in, the, in some parts of Europe, but I, it's only for a visit. So when I came across Montenegro, I see that how it would be easy for me as a Philippine passport holder, that I, all I need to do is to open up a company and I can be registered as a resident for a year. And Matthew, as my spouse, he can get his residency through me, through marriage. So we found Montenegro uh, at the time. And then I looked for a lawyer or a consultant um, in Montenegro while I was in New Zealand. I get in touch with him. And then he told me about the documents that I need to bring, the process, this and that. So it's kind of simple and straightforward. So Matt and I left uh, New Zealand. That was uh, September last year. It was still locked down in New Zealand when we left. And when we arrived in Montenegro, it was tail end of summer. It was beautiful. Life is pretty normal. So we're a bit of like culture shock and... Uh... <laughs> They let you out, no masks, no yes, being stuck at home, yes. everything was open. And like, oh my God, this is, is this is stunning. And yes, yeah, so um, when we arrived the second day, I have a meeting with my lawyer because we don't want to waste time as well. Mm-hmm. And then we got a place in Tivat that I booked for a month because our lawyer was based in Tibet. So it's it would be easier for us to like live there for a while. And while our lawyer is processing my company registration and my residency, Matt and I did our honeymoon for a month and travel some parts of Montenegro. So it nice. was really wonderful. So yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And so how long did the process take for you to open up your company and was it was it easy was it hard or how did that work for you 
So based on my experience, it was pretty easy because mm-hmm. I already had a conversation or a communication with my lawyer beforehand. So I already know what documents I need to get ready. And at the time when he opened up my company, when I arrived, it only take I think three weeks in total. Okay. And then after that, I had a um, appointment with the immigration office in Tivat. So I could do my biometric and then um, I got my residency ID uh, after one month or one and a half months, something like that, four wow. to six weeks. So in general, yeah. That's total. quick. That's very fast. So yeah. obviously um, preparation ahead of time played a key a key mm-hmm. role in that for sure. Yes. And so let's see, what's, uh, what do you love about Montenegro? Um, well, I could say that Montenegro is somehow similar with, from my home country, Philippines. Similar in a sense that it's still a developing country. Mm-hmm. So I can somehow, there's like a bit of a culture that somehow is similar to ours, to mine, back home in the Philippines, uh, it's like a laid back life. It's like an island life. Um, people are warm as well. But of mm-hmm. course, there are also like the downside of it. Mm-hmm. Things are quite slow. Things are not as like, there's a lot of things or, you know, like um, what they call the situations here in Montenegro that could be developed or progress, but they're, they're getting there or they're still in that situation. So that's understandable and I can easily relate into that so yeah Mm -hmm. and um, just in case people are unaware that Montenegro is very is a very very small country and Mm -hmm. the population of the entire country is under 650,000 people yes Yes. and that that's the whole country so that's like a neighborhood in some major cities, (laughs) you know, or some, some cities. Like I think if we were compared to Istanbul, it would be like a neighborhood in Istanbul. And so with that. In the Philippines, because mm -hmm. our population is 106 million. So it's like you do the math and then you can really. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's, that's why it is still in part why it's still developing is because there isn't Mm -hmm. the population there isn't a lot of things and that's part of the reason why it gets it's slow to get things done but it's it's also the charm of it that there isn't major people everywhere and busy all the time so it's Mm -hmm. it's finding that balance between between them Plus, I, it's also like the nature. I really mm-hmm. love nature. And back in the Philippines, I live in the beach. I live in the island. So it's like, and now I live also in Budva, which is the coastal of Montenegro. Like the beach is just like five minutes walk from us. So mm-hmm. it's just reminds me of home. But also I like Montenegro because it's geographically situated that it's easier to travel. Like for example, in other neighboring um, European countries like Italy, Barcelona, and the flights are just cheap and very accessible. So that's one thing that also what I love of Montenegro. So yeah. Excellent. And so aside from family and friends, Mm -hmm. what is something that you miss from, let's say from New Zealand and something from the Philippines? Um, wow, that's, uh, or you can pick a couple, a couple of, <laughs> at each place, because I know sometimes it's hard okay. to pick one. <laughs> Maybe from the Philippines is the food and mm-hmm. um, the food and of course the tropical climate when we only have two seasons like um, rainy and sunny. So mm-hmm. but it's like tropical um, climate, the food as well. Um, what else do I miss? Um, yeah, family and friends. And um, I could not say the lifestyle because it's pretty much the same of my lifestyle here. Mm-hmm. I'm also a self-employed entrepreneur back in the Philippines, which is, I'm also doing here in um, Montenegro. So New Zealand, what I miss from New Zealand is, uh, wow, okay, a lot of things. For example, the food as well. Okay. They have a really good food, uh, cheese, wine, mm-hmm. um, everything. So it's the foods are great. The nature as well. Well, it's a first world country, considered a first world country. I mean, the banking system is really good in New Zealand. 
<laughs> everything is online, everything mm-hmm. is digital, everything is on time. <laughs> <laughs> there there so, are those conveniences. Yes. Definitely there's those, those, yes, conveniences. There those conveniences. Yes, yes, I agree. So yeah, those pretty much are the um, things that okay. I miss on both Yes, yeah. And and of course, you know, there's there's always going to be a few things that that everybody misses because there is no, in my opinion, there is no perfect place. There's always, yes. Yes. you know, my my perfect place is somewhere in my mind. It doesn't exist because I would take yeah. something from this country, a couple things from this country, a couple things from this country. There's always always something, but overall, um, mm-hmm. and food is is one thing that it's just never the same in another country. Yes, like the authenticity it, of, of the food, of something that you can only find from one country to another. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's when um, when you get a chance to, to go back to visit or if you have people coming to visit, yeah. that's when you say, okay, before you come, here's my list of things. And if you can yes. get a, a few of those <laughs> things and then it's a surprise, whatever they bring and and yeah. it's exciting to see them, and then you get those those things that yeah, uh, that we can't find. Happiness. Small things that brought happiness. So, that's yeah. right. That's right. And I've I've done it too. Um, when I lived in Costa Rica, mm-hmm. I had a list of things that I would have people bring from Canada <laughs> when they came down. And I mean, one of the things was dill pickle potato chips. Because oh, wow. Sounds at that good. time, yeah, it, it's imagine dill pickles, but yeah. potato chips, like chips, they're, yeah. they're delicious. And of course, not available in Costa Rica, even for a long time, they weren't even available in the United States. I'm not sure if they are yeah. now. That was a staple thing that everybody yeah. came. It's like, okay, but dill pickle potato chips. And then of course, there was, there was always, <laughs> there was always a few other things, but I, I remember that was um, a staple because it yeah. was also my daughter's favorite chips too so that, that was that was always always on the list and let's see so you've got here you've got your your business going in and so what are you doing mm-hmm. for for a business now here in Montenegro yeah so my business is called Mantra Wellness DOO and I opened a uh, wellness uh, studio I'm a certified massage and Reiki therapist so mostly I do uh, massages in a holistic way and also like remedial massages because um, I got my certification back in New Zealand, my experience back in the Philippines and also in Bali. So, so plus it's also my passion as well to um, be in a holistic um line and also i opened a um for my husband my husband and i opened a um liquor shop so it's yeah. like that's his side of business so i know it's holistic and the liquor shop doesn't work. well you know yeah. you, you yeah. need to relax a little yeah. before you go to the spa or while you're at the spa yeah. you know you have just to yeah. relax a little bit more <laughs> So but both, husband, yeah, it's the one running the the liquor shop business. So I'm the one doing the um, wellness uh, therapy. So yes. Oh, excellent. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm I'm sure a good opportunity here because with your holistic studio, a yeah. lot of more locals. I'm sure there's some tourists and stuff yeah. and, and regulars yeah. that come in and locals and and of course with the, with the shop that's definitely mm-hmm. locals as well. But also yes. a lot more the with, tourism. with tourism yeah. to find some nice wines. Um, Montenegro does produce wine and has its own wine, but I've tried a few, but there's not a large selection yes. of, of wine in Montenegro. So, yeah. um, so that's great that, that you have that. And I, I hope it's, it's going well. Did you have problems with importing wines from, from different places with getting licenses for that, how mm-hmm. how did that kind of work? And in, in a large overview of it, yes. Well, for the license, it's just easy. So we applied for the license, we got the license as well. And for the importation, that was our original plan mm-hmm. that import from New Zealand or from Australia or from uh, other countries, uh, country producing wines. Mm-hmm. But we find we found that how it's going to be difficult when it comes to the customs, the fees, and there, there, there is like the so-called uh, minimum order of quantity, mm-hmm. like, um, for example, 10,000 bottles. But it's kind of like a big risk and commitment for us, especially mm-hmm. like 
we are not familiar yet with the um, demographics, with the situation. We don't have that like time to feasible study the mm. feasibility of, of the business because the liquor shop, it's easy to set up. Like you can sell not just wines, spirits as well, non-alcoholic or alcohol, any alcoholic drinks and mix it with like a small stuff like um, mini market like mm -hmm. market type. So we want to concentrate actually as a wine shop, but we find that it's going to be difficult when it comes to importing to Montenegro. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we just contacted some few um, importers or brokers mm -hmm. who bring wines here in Montenegro. So we actually sell different wines from New Zealand, um, Australia, Italy, Spain, and France. So yeah. <laughs> oh, excellent. That's, that's great. So that's, um, and I was just asking, so, so some of the listeners could kind of mm -hmm. get some, some idea of opening a business and if it's very challenging or, or not too mm -hmm. challenging. And I mean, not that any business is simple, yeah. but, um, you know, with, especially with imports and things like that. So it seems that with, with, you know, some work, of course, it, it yeah. wasn't, uh, too hard and you can get to know your, your demographics and what's yeah. popular and not so popular yeah. as, yeah. as time goes by. And also coming out of the pandemic, mm. even if you were here for the last two years, it wouldn't give true, true kind of numbers or, or know what's yes. going on because everything, I mean, everything in those industries are, are completely different. So yes, that's true. I agree with that. So when it comes to the paperwork and documents, um, one thing that of course is like the hurdle to, is the, um, what they call this, the language because mm -hmm. everything is in their local language. But it's a good thing if you have a lawyer that you can just like, hey, can you check this document um, for me before I sign this, before mm -hmm. I sign any contract, lease contract, and so on and so forth. So it, I would advise that there should be like a lawyer, an on-call lawyer, a retainer lawyer here in Montenegro that you can just like send the documents and said, hey, can you look this up? Is it good? Mm -hmm. Is it not? Or something like that. So... Yeah. Definitely, definitely good <laughs> especially advice. Especially with business, especially it's, with business. Mm -hmm, especially with business. Um, it's a foreigner, yeah. <laughs> and and the Montenegrin language is not an easy language yes. to yes. to learn. Not. I I even know some people from Montenegro who say it's not an easy language yes. to learn. Yes. So if if the locals are saying it's hard, then then definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So always, always a good idea to have things looked, yes. looked over just to make mm. sure. Yeah. Is there something that you wished you would have brought with you from New Zealand that maybe you thought, oh, mm -hmm. it's okay. I can live without it or I can get a new one or something. And then after being here for a while, you think, oh, why didn't I bring that item? <laughs> um. Hmm. None really, because oh, um, yes, <laughs> um, when we move into the apartment, everything is fully furnished. So it's like me and my husband, especially me, I'm a very minimalist person. Okay. When we left New Zealand, we only have two luggages, 25 kilos each, and that's it. Our wow. family back in New Zealand was worried like how can you leave you're moving to a different country you're living to a different continent and then I said like mm, it's okay it's fine like we have our um puffer jackets puffer coats for winter so that's all right we have some boots and this and that so that's okay so with the apartments some of the apartments here are all modern and fully mm -hmm. furnished so you just have to check and that will be that will be fine so yeah I guess it does make it a lot easier when yeah. when you find a place initially that's fully furnished. So if yes. people are are considering Montenegro or coming, then definitely to have a place first, I would recommend, even if they yeah. were planning to ship things over, yes. rent a place that's fully furnished, take the time to find 100%. whatever their deal, ideal mm -hmm. thing is, and then because it's, it would take some time, I'm sure, to get things shipped. And of course, depending upon where it's coming from. Yeah. 
Um, but two suitcases. Wow. That's, that's yes. impressive. One suitcase. <laughs> each. And I mean, if there's puffer jackets in those suitcases, those jackets take up a lot of space. Yes. So yes. that means you didn't like, have a lot of clothes. Oh, I think we were, we were wearing a, um, puffer jacket because when we left New Zealand, it was mm -hmm. winter. Oh, so okay. Like we were like wearing it all the way to the airport. <laughs> And then when we arrive in Montenegro, it was summer because it's a northern and southern hemisphere. Right, yeah. right. I right. remember that. Oh, so I was like, this jacket's got to come off. It's too hot. Yes, when we left, I think when we arrived in Qatar, because we had a stopover in Qatar and then mm -hmm. Belgrade, and Australia first from New Zealand. So it's like a 25 wow. journey, three, three stopovers, yeah. Wow, I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't think it would be be that many, but I guess it, it is pretty far. It is, it is. Wow. It's further than Australia. It's at the bottom of mm -hmm. Australia. The next one to New Zealand is Antarctica. So. Right, right. And you don't want to be going there. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Way too cold. <laughs> way too cold. Only penguins live there. That's and right. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. And so... What do you enjoy most about Montenegro? Well, I enjoy most is um, the lifestyle. It's, it has a like a laid back lifestyle. And actually it depends where you live and it depends um, of your job. It depends of, yeah. And also the cost of living, it's very, very affordable. As compared, of course, if I will compare it back to New Zealand, the cost of living here is... Um, affordable so mm -hmm. that's one thing and second yeah the laid-back lifestyle living by the beach and then everything is just uh what they call this right now it's summer every day it's kind of sunny so really mm -hmm. enjoying it and also the situation or the lo location of uh, Montenegro it's easier to travel my husband we just get get back from Barcelona we just got back from Italy like last month two weeks ago so it's just like yeah it's just that's one thing I like <laughs> it, it is very easy to reach easy. western yeah. Europe kind yeah. of the northern parts too and then of course the Balkans yeah. um, Croatia um, Greece yeah. even I think yes. it's two and a half hours I think to get to Istanbul so yeah. somebody Great really time. wants crazy busy for a week two and a half yeah. hour yeah. flight you can yeah be in Istanbul so it, it is yeah very um a, a very good location very for, good for travels location. especially um if you really love to travel this mm -hmm. is because coming from New Zealand it's we felt how hard and difficult and expensive it was like mm -hmm. the closest country that we can get to is Australia <laughs> right. and it's like not three hour flight four hour flight depends where in Australia mm -hmm. plus it feels like you didn't really go out of New Zealand because it's just typically like a, somehow similar so yeah <laughs> yeah very very, very similar and, and yeah. not that far enough. that's the same in a way for me for Canada mm. um, I'm from the western part of Canada so of course going into the United States is is close but yeah. even still I mean if if I were to fly to Europe it takes forever or to go the other way Japan or, or yeah, something Asia, I mean, it's crazy yes. Yes. so and yeah. it's it's expensive and I, I say to people and I, I don't know exactly what it is but I said you know you can probably you can easily fly six or seven hours and still be in Canada like if yes, you're flying east about. east to west <laughs> if you, you know and I don't I don't know if it was like from the furthest point to the furthest point how far it would be but definitely you can be six hours and still in Canada where True. In Montenegro, if you fly six or seven hours, you you can hit a lot of countries in that you amount can cross of time. Like, like... The old borders <laughs> of, of Europe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you you would be outside of Europe in in that outside amount of time. Europe, the amount of time. So yeah, that's one thing mm -hmm. I like because me personally, I really I'm a traveler by heart, and my husband he now learning how to travel. <laughs> so we're really enjoying it. So yeah, great. Great. And so one last question. Mm -hmm. What's one piece of advice that you would give somebody who is 
I'll say on the fence about moving abroad. They're, they're nervous. They're worried. You know, the brain always thinks of all these negative what ifs. So if, if yeah. they want you, but they're really just not quite sure, what's one piece of advice you would give to them? Um, one piece of advice, I could say that, yes, I mean, just have a leap of faith. A leap of faith and courage to do the thing that you wanted to do. But of course, you just not do it spontaneously. You really have to plan strategically as well, realistically. Mm-hmm. And um, you have to make a research, especially moving in a different country, um, the pros and the cons. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But of course, what will stop you is you. it will get you... Um, like the fear, the unknown fear of moving and that will stop, you know, I will not do this or you will procrastinate. it. So what you have to do is just have a leap of faith, have courage, but you also have to like plan very, very strategically. So, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and with that too, that's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just like moving to another, a different part of your own country in a, in a sense that you wouldn't like in Canada, if I were to move mm-hmm. from east to west, I would yeah. want to be doing some, some, what are the good areas of the city? If I have kids, yeah. what about the school? I mean, that's mm-hmm. um, typical thing. So, yeah. so some great advice. And then just take <laughs> that leap of faith, just as you said. Great. So if um, our yes. listeners are coming to Budva yes. and they're in Montenegro, how could they get a hold of you to get mm-hmm. some treatments done or find your, your liquor yes. store to, to get some great wines while they enjoy their evenings um, in the yes. city? Yes. So of course, we ha- I have a uh, Instagram and Facebook. It's called Bancha Wellness um, Studio. And for the liquor shop, it's called Liquor Shop Budva. So you can easily find it in uh, Google Map or in Google Page and uh, Instagram, Facebook. And I have a WhatsApp number that could be contacted. Can I say it here? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And we'll okay. also put um, <laughs> the links to like all your social media and things like yeah. that. All those links okay. will be in the in the show notes and everything. So people can okay. easily just click on the link yeah. and, and find you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a WhatsApp number. Number, Viber or Telegram. It's plus 382 um, 699-49247. So it's I'm reachable on that on that number. So yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for your time and sharing oh, your, oh, your story and experience well. with everybody. Pleasure. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.